Hello growers, I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. I've got the Spider Farmer G8600. It's a large, powerful grow light at an incredible price. It's an amazing deal, but my test revealed an issue that will be a challenge for many growers. I run it through five different PAR and EPAR tests in a 5x5 space. I tested at different hanging heights and dimmer positions for growers with and without supplemental carbon dioxide. The Spider Farmer G8600 sets records for cost efficiency and photon efficacy. It's an incredible deal, but it won't work well for all growers. I'll explain why. If you're watching during the live premiere, this G8600 could be your new light. I'm doing a PAR test premiere giveaway. Guess the three digit winning number in the live chat. If you missed the premiere, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next one. The Spider Farmer G8600 is a large grow light, but it arrives disassembled in this box. Right on top we got the manual, and then the LED bars are packed in pairs. Let's check one out. There are a total of eight LED bars. I like fixtures that disassemble because they save on shipping, which lowers the cost. Of course, we'll have to see how easily it assembles. Below the bars we have the rest of the G8600. First, let's look at the driver. It is Spider Farmer branded. Here's clips to attach the driver to the fixture, a hanging kit, RJ cable to daisy chain, and some clips. Finally, we have the frame pieces, with plastic clips to hold the LED bars. And this one has wiring installed. Let's take a look at what we got. We got the Spider Farmer driver with the dimming box there on the right. Then we got the accessories and user manual. The LED bars are going to click into these brackets on the frame and each LED bar has a plug to connect to this side. Along each bar, you can see the three rows of diodes. They're concentrated somewhat towards the ends of the bars. Let me get the G8600 put together. The bars snap in easily to the clips along the frame. The bars are evenly positioned and they're not adjustable, but I think the clip design is simple and easy. Gotta get the bars on top of the frame on this other side and then just snap them all into place. I'll flip it over and connect the cables from each bar to the cables on the frame piece. It's ready to be hung up. It comes with two ratchet pulleys and a cable hanging system, but I always use four ratchet pulleys for my tests. I'll raise it up, connect the power cord, and turn it on. Let's check out the diodes. Spider Farmer has two lines of LED bar fixtures. The SE series uses Samsung LM301B and Osram 660 nanometer diodes. They're considered the best by many growers, but they're also more expensive for manufacturers. So Spider Farmer also makes the G-Series here, which uses Bridgelux diodes. Since the Bridgelux diodes are less expensive, they use more of them. The result is a fixture that performs very well and costs less. Each bar in the G8600 has 336 diodes. The total diode count is 2,688. With a published power draw of 860 watts, that equals 3.13 diodes per watt, or 0.32 watts per diode. Like many grow lights, there are 3000K and 5000K white diodes, along with 660 nanometer deep red diodes. Check out my video, The Science of Horticultural Diodes, if you want to know why. While I wait for these diodes to warm up, let's go check out the published stats. This is the G8600 product page on spiderfarmer.com. You can see the price is about $627, but we have an 8% discount code, CCFC. Here, you can see it's listed at 860 watts. With a photon efficacy of 2.8 micromoles per joule, or a total PPF of 2,391 micromoles. Let's take these numbers and run them through the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Calculator. This is our tool to help growers evaluate grow lights. It focuses on the most important metrics and allows you to make better estimates and comparisons. In the calculator on the right, I load data about all the fixtures that I test. In the calculator on the left, you can enter data about any grow light. The Spider Farmer G8600 is listed at 860 watts. If you use discount code CCFC on spiderfarmer.com, your cost will be only about $577. And the PPF data is from an in-house sphere test, which is total PPF. They measured a total of 2,391 micromoles. The calculator predicts that 2,070 micromoles of light will reach the canopy. That would be an incredible 2.41 micromoles per watt, 
and a record-setting 28 cents per micromole. Wow, I'll be impressed if the G8600 can hit these numbers. Let's run some tests. I set the G8600 in a 5x5 area, and I immediately discovered one issue. In order to get the maximum PPFD down to 1,000 micromoles per square meter, I had to raise the G8600 all the way up to 68 centimeters, about 27 inches above the sensor. This is close to the limit of my testing rig, and probably higher than most tent growers want to run their light. I ran the complete PAR test with the Apogee SQ500 sensor, and then I ran an EPAR test with the Apogee SQ610 extended PAR sensor. EPAR is just like PAR, except it also includes far red light from 700 to 750 nanometers. The latest research supports the use of EPAR for the most accurate measurements of photosynthetic light. Let's check out the density maps from these official tests. First, we have the PAR map. These values represent the density of PAR light. For efficient growing in spaces without supplemental carbon dioxide, we want to see values at least 500 and not more than 1,000 micromoles per square meter. I set the hanging height so that the maximum is 1,000, and you can see that the lowest corner here is great at 652 micromoles per square meter. 652 is well above the 500 minimum threshold, but to be honest, I would expect a more uniform distribution of light because the hanging height is so high. In the EPAR map, all of the values go up because EPAR measures all of the PAR light plus far red light. This is an excellent EPAR map. There's a ton of light, and the distribution isn't bad. It's just that at 68 centimeters above the sensors, I would expect it to be even better. Let's run the numbers. I mentioned that the hanging height was up at 68 centimeters, about 27 inches above the sensors. In the PAR range, from 400 to 700 nanometers, the maximum density was 1,000 micromoles per square meter. In the EPAR range, from 400 to 750 nanometers, the maximum density was 1,048 micromoles per square meter. In the PAR test, the average density was 827.5 micromoles per square meter. That equates to a usable PPF of 1,861.9 micromoles. In the EPAR test, the average density was 873 micromoles per square meter. That's good for a usable PPF of 1,964.2 micromoles. The power draw was consistent at 835 watts, which gives the G8600 PAR photon efficacy of 2.23 micromoles per watt, and an EPAR photon efficacy of 2.35 micromoles per watt. Overall, these are excellent numbers, especially for a fixture at such a good price point. The issue is that a lot of growers and grow tents do not have the vertical space that the G8600 requires at full power. I decided to lower the G8600 to 41 centimeters, or about 16 inches above the sensor. This is a much more reasonable hanging height for tent-based growers, and I feel like a large LED bar fixture ought to be able to cover a 5x5 space at 16 inches. Of course, I had to dim the G8600 to keep the center PPFD at 1,000 micromoles per square meter. It's drawing 645 watts. I ran both a PAR test and an EPAR test in this configuration. I figure low and dim is one way that many growers may try to run the G8600. Let's check out the maps. First up, we have the PAR map. You can see that with this low dim setup, the corners all fall below the 500 micromole per square meter threshold for efficient photosynthesis. It is true that I throttled the G8600 back to only 645 watts, but still, the corners are below our target density. I would have liked to run more power, but turning up the dimmer would have brought the center value over the 1000 micromole per square meter limit. The issue is distribution. In the EPAR map, the values all go up, but the corners are still below 500 micromoles per square meter. The distribution is not as good as it could be, but these are actually incredible maps for a fixture pulling only 645 watts. The efficacy is going to be off the charts. Let's run the numbers. The hanging height in these tests was a very reasonable 41 centimeters, or 16 inches, above the sensors. And I had to dim the G8600 to about 70% power to keep the maximum PPFD in the PAR range at 1,000 micromoles per square meter. The maximum E PPFD was 1,040 micromoles per square meter. 
In the PAR range, I measured an average PPFD of 717.2 micromoles per square meter, which equates to a usable PPF of 1,613.7 micromoles. In the EPAR range, the average density was 753 micromoles per square meter. That equates to a usable EPPF of 1,694.3 micromoles. At 70%, the power draw was only 645 watts. That means the G8600 pulled an impressive 2.5 micromoles per watt in the PAR range and an incredible 2.63 micromoles per watt in the EPAR range. As I said, the photon efficacy is off the charts. There's one more test to run. I left the fixture hanging at 41 centimeters or 16 inches, and I cranked the dimmer up to 100%. This is going to produce a hot spot in the middle that will be safe for plants only if you elevate the levels of carbon dioxide. With supplemental CO2 levels at 1200 ppm, you can run up to a maximum PPFD of 1500 micromoles per square meter. I'd want about 1200 ppm of CO2 if I was going to run the G8600 in this configuration. Let's check out the map. I just ran the EPAR test. You can see the area in red, which is only safe with supplemental CO2. The maximum EPPFD is 1,308 micromoles per square meter. The corners are all above the 500 micromole per square meter threshold, but the lowest density value, 560, is less than 43% of the maximum. Distribution out to the corners is certainly the weak spot for the G8600. Everything else is very impressive. Let's run the numbers. The hanging height remained 41 centimeters or 16 inches above the sensor. The maximum EPPFD was 1,308 micromoles per square meter, and the average EPPFD was 948.2 micromoles per square meter. That's good for a usable EPPF of 2,133.3 micromoles. That's better than the calculator's prediction. The power draw was back to 835 watts at 100% which means the G8600 delivered a photon efficacy of 2.55 micromoles per watt in this test. I'm sorry, but that's just better than I expected. Really impressive efficacy. Before we move on, I want to look back at the official EPAR map. This test was also at 100% power, but much higher above the canopy. You can see the distribution is much more even here at 68 centimeters as opposed to 41 centimeters. Here at the lower height, the light doesn't spread out as well, but more of it reaches the canopy. The usable EPPF in this test was 2,133.3 micromoles. At the higher 68 centimeter height, the usable EPPF was only 1,964.2 micromoles. That's less light overall, and less light in the middle. But, and this is important, there is more light in the corners. At this height, the lowest corner was 687 micromoles per square meter. When I lowered the G8600, the lowest corner goes down to 560 micromoles per square meter. The density of light certainly went up in the middle, but it goes down in the corners and along the sides. If you want to keep studying the maps, you'll find all of them, along with my written review, in the Spider Farmer G8600 test report in the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Guide. Here are the main data from the official EPAR test. Excellent efficacy and a lot of light. You can see we rate it to cover over 30 square feet and estimate that you can harvest over 52 ounces, well over 3 pounds. Here you can find our discount code in the shopping link. ShopSpiderFarmer.com and use discount code CCFC for an 8% discount. That will make your cost only about $577. That gives it a record-setting cost efficiency of only $0.29 cents per micromol. 2.35 micromoles per watt at only $0.29 cents per micromol. That is elite efficiency at a yard sale price. The cost makes the G8600 stand out. So the winning number in the Partest Premier giveaway is the price you'll pay with discount code CCFC577. Congrats to whoever guessed the closest number during the live premiere. If you missed the premiere, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I do giveaways during my Partest video premieres. Below the test data, 
in the gross face calculator, you'll find my written review. The PAR and EPAR tests show both the strengths and the relative weaknesses of the Spider Farmer G8600. Although it has a record setting price point, the G8600 is a powerful light that is incredibly efficient. It can generate plenty of light to fill a 5x5 grow space. However, the distribution of light is not its strength. That means you'll need to run it high to run it at full power. The hanging height will be a challenge for tent growers, but if you have the vertical space to allow the light to spread out, it may be a great option for you. It's certainly a great deal. After the PAR and EPAR tests, we measured the surface temperatures. The tops of the LED bars hit 46.8 degrees Celsius, 116.2 degrees Fahrenheit. The Spider Farmer driver hit a high temperature of 58.2 degrees Celsius, 136.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Like all grow lights, the amount of heat that the G8600 will add to your space is a function of the power draw. If you run it at full power, about 835 watts in my tests, it will generate about 2,850 BTU per hour. I also tested the dimmer. There's a continuously variable dimmer knob mounted with the driver. However, on the model that I tested, the fixture reached full power when the knob appeared to be set at 80%. Power in PPFD did not change between an apparent 80 and 100%. Possibly as a result of this, throughout the dimming range, the power in PPFD were higher than the apparent dimmer position. However, there is a consistent relationship between power draw and PPFD output. If you want to accurately measure the dimming on any fixture, it's better to use a power meter rather than rely on the apparent dimmer setting. The Spider Farmer G8600 is an incredible deal. It shatters the 30 cents per micromole barrier. Micromole per micromole, you will not find a better price. However, be aware that you'll need a lot of vertical space or supplemental carbon dioxide in order to take advantage of all those micromoles. At Cocoa for Cannabis, we always put the grower's interests first. Our goal is to provide impartial, science-based testing and reviews for home growers. You support our work when you use our discount codes to purchase grow lights. If you have questions or want to chat with me, I do the Ask Dr. Coco show every Monday night for my Patreon subscribers. Visit my Patreon page, Dr. MJ Coco. I'd like to thank Cheetah at Spider Farmer for sending me the G8600 to test. And thank you for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next PAR test premiere giveaway. And if you want to win a light, we're always doing grow light giveaways on the deals and discounts page at CocoForCannabis.com. Check it out. And while you're there, you can read our articles, chat with our community in the chat room, join our next grow challenge, or try your hand at the grow light calculator. Grow your own, but don't grow alone. Let's grow together. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, sending all of you grower love.